welcome. You're watching Head to Head. I'm Antonina Antosha with UATB. Today, we're talking about the financial inclusion. This means citizens and businesses having access to financial products and services, regardless of their income, age, place of residence, or type of activity. Financial inclusion is essential for the growth of the state's economy. No wonder that the National Bank of Ukraine defines it as one of its priorities. Recently, a specialized forum on the financial inclusion was held here in Kyiv. Now, to talk more about this forum, cryptocurrencies and perspectives of cashless society, we are joined in the studio today by Gabriel Soderberg, a financial stability expert. Hello and thank you for joining us. Thank you. Uh, so tell us all about the Finclusion Forum. So the fin Finclusion Forum brings together experts from both the public and the private sector to discuss uh, firstly about financial inclusion in, in a broad perspective and in different aspects of mm. that, but also about new financial technology and interaction and cooperation between uh, public and private sector and how that can shape the future. Mm -hmm. What is financial inclusion? For me as an ordinary citizen, how do I understand that? Mm. What is financial inclusion for me? Mm. So financial inclusion means that you as an ordinary citizen can have access to uh, financial services that are affordable but also sustainable and, uh, and, uh, and, um, and safe for you. So it's, it's, uh, in a way it's a complicated uh, subject because it, it's, not only the, it's not only getting access to the financial uh, service but you need to have it a sustainable way. So it needs to be regulated in a healthy way. Mm -hmm. Looks like uh, to, to be able to work with the financial inclusion, it was the way you just described it, mm -hmm. one needs to be financially educated. Is it so? Yes, uh, mm. you can say that uh, we speak about financial literacy, etc. And of course, it's very important to have financial literacy because people need to know enough in order to make healthy uh, financial decisions. But you know, it's also, it's also about having trust. Even how much you know, even if you know a lot about all the financial services that are out there, if you can't trust these financial services, if you don't trust the government, if you don't trust uh, the financial institutes, etc., you're not going to get very much out of it. So it's also about trust. Okay, so how does financial inclusion work in Sweden? So, you could say that Sweden is a very financially inclusive society. We have 100% of people who own, who have a, an account, a bank account, etc. At the same time, what we see now is, uh, as we are moving towards uh, a cashless society, in which cash is or used... You are basically a cashless society. Well, we have cash still. We do have cash, uh, but it is, uh, yes, as you say, we are rapidly sort of... Uh, cash is being crowded out by electronic forms of payments. And mm. what we find is that this might be a, a way of saying that, wow, we have a, an enormous amount of financial inclusion, and we do. But at the same time, new people are getting excluded because they rely on cash in their daily lives, and they can't use cash more and more in, in the stores, etc. Okay, but ca cashless uh, operations, it doesn't mean just using regular money online or not having it in paper. Uh, that means using cryptocurrencies as well. Am I right? Well, not necessarily. Mm. So cryptocurrencies is, of course, uh, you could see that, that as an alternative. Uh, but a cryptocurrency works very differently from uh, a national uh, established currency. Explain. So a cryptocurrency, now there is also a discussion how to define cryptocurrencies. And, exactly. And some people call it crypto assets, etc. Some call it crypto things or whatever you want to call it. So, but let's, let's call it cryptocurrencies for now, so to speak, so we, so we can have a conversation. Okay. Uh, so my way of uh, trying to define that is that cryptocurrencies are digital units that uh, can be transferred from one user uh, to another in a network using uh, crypto cryptography. Mm -hmm. And if I find someone, for you for instance, who are willing to accept my unit, digital unit uh, in exchange for something else, then I can use that uh, for payments. But you cannot cash them to get the real paper cash. Well, you can sell them, of course. Again, if you can find someone who is willing to pay you in an um, established national currency, you can mm -hmm. get payment from, from them, of course. You can sell that. Okay, how many cryptocurrencies do exist now in the world? So it depends on how you define uh, cryptocurrencies, of course. Some people are now starting to discuss that we need to sort of uh, a more, uh, a more um, finely granulated nomenclature for these, that some coins are different from other coins, etc., perhaps called utility coins, etc. Mm -hmm. But it is true that if we sort of just amass all of them together, uh, there are around 1,600 today. 1,600? Uh, yes, 1,600. At last, last I checked at least. But it's increasing rapidly. It's increasing rapidly. 
Oh my, you just surprised me. You're oh, so I'm, I'm glad I surprised uh, you. And is the blockchain system the only way of obtaining the cryptocurrency or are they all different? In well, in the typical sort of cryptocurrency, a blockchain is, is the most typical way of, of, mm -hmm. of doing this. Uh, there are some which are experimenting with other forms of doing it. Like what? Uh, there is something called, uh, uh, there is, uh, I'm not entirely sure what they are using, but they are using other forms of it. So I'm not entirely sure what they are using. Mm -hmm. But I know that there is a discussion of go moving beyond the blockchain. Mm -hmm. what, is, what is ICO? So an ICO stands for Initial Coin Offering, mm -hmm. uh, and that, which is a form of crowdfunding, mm -hmm. which basically means that you open up, you have a project in which you want people to invest in. Uh, in many ways, it's very much like an initial public offering when you have, a, you have a company and you want to sell stocks in that. So what you do is that you promise people if they pay, you're going to give them coins in your future for an established uh, digital currency. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you, when you sort of launch your product, they will get that. Okay, uh, why is Bitcoin so popular? Well, first of all, it was the first digital currency, of course. Mm. And then it depends on what you mean by popular. How do you define popular? Why does the price of Bitcoin raise mm. so rapidly? Okay, so first we need to look at why do people buy Bitcoins? Okay, why do yeah, people buy why Bitcoins? Do people, and what we see is that people buy them you know, in the hope that they, it will increase in value. So in many ways, they're not buying it in order to make payments. They're buying mm -hmm. it and then keep them in order for it to see it rising value. So okay. they're not treating it as money, they're actually treating it as an investment. How high are the chances that all of this cryptocurrency market, let's call it this way, is just uh, one big bubble that's going to burst one of these days? Well, it's like, always, um, yeah. you know, like a tower, you know, that you mm -hmm. built and then mm -hmm. it falls mm -hmm. apart. Yes, um, so it's always difficult to sort of try to foresee the future, etc. Uh, and I'm always careful to, to do that. But certainly what you need to be aware of is, is to uh, discuss, uh, is it sustainable to have a very high continual price rises, etc. Mm -hmm. And in many ways, I think it's up to, this comes back to financial literacy that we discussed earlier. Mm. Uh, it's, we must have financial literacy in order to make people look at this and then say, is it sustainable? What are people waiting for? Mm -hmm. Why is it rising? Well, that's my question exactly. Uh -huh. What are people waiting for while buying cryptocurrencies? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Since there is no actual real chance to exchange it for real money and to buy real products mm -hmm. like, like regularly things like food, mm -hmm. like, you know, to pay for transportation or mm. to pay your bills, mm. you know, like an electric mm. bill or something like that. Mm. Maybe you can pay for some type of services, mm. but you cannot exchange it into paper mm. cash. Mm. So why are people buying it? So I think some people are uh, betting on that it will be established as a form of, uh, as a mainstream form of payments in the future. Mm -hmm. And that I think. Uh, at the same time, I think that a problem here is that if something increases in value, it actually undermines its potential to being established as, uh, as a currency in the future. Mm -hmm. Because why would you use, why would you buy something with a, with a currency that is increasing in value? It might, might makes much more sense to just hold on to it, don't buy anything, and then sell it or buy something else when it's sort of risen in value. Mm -hmm. So it, there are possible problems here, yes, I agree with that. Okay, which cryptocurrency would you recommend to invest in? Oh, I wouldn't dream of giving uh, investment advice, or especially not in such a risky area. So. Okay, so you're... You don't see the promising signs of any of the cryptocurrencies? Uh, as not, the at the mo not at the moment. I see that there are lots of uh, problems at the moment, challenges. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, for instance, the fluctuations in price that we, we've been seeing. Uh, we also have fluctuations in, uh, in transaction fees, for instance, in, 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 in Bitcoin, for instance. Mm -hmm. uh, in 2017, towards the end of the year, prices for making a transaction were around $60. Yeah. And why would you use that to buy a cup of a cup, a cup of coffee. coffee. Yeah, why? Yeah. Uh, it's too expensive, etc. Uh, there are ways of, there are uh, initiatives within the cryptocurrency community which tries to address some of these issues. But I think it's too soon to sort of say that this will be successful or not successful. We will see. But I think at the moment there are too many challenges to think that there will be a mainstream adoption in the near future. All right, but if we're not talking about just buying a simple cup of coffee, if we're buying about, if we're talking about bigger deals, mm -hmm. like I know that there are countries out there and there are islands out there, like for example, St. Lucia, that has this second passport programs, mm -hmm. uh, obtaining a second citizenship by investment programs. Okay. 
And what they offer <laughs> is that you invest in uh, in the economy or in real estate, mm -hmm. and you can do it in cryptocurrencies and obtain a second mm -hmm. citizenship and a second passport. Okay. Now, is that reliable? Well, I don't know anything about this uh, thing that you're telling me about, so I, I don't know very I, very much of it. So I don't know if it's re reliable. But okay. I do know if you have a cryptocurrency, then of course, if you set a price, you say it. Uh, let's say it's this amount of crypto, uh, say bitcoins, mm -hmm. and then the value of the bitcoin fluctuates, etc. It will sort of make it problematic for you. So I can't say much about this uh, individual uh, scheme. Case. No, unfortunately scheme. not. Oh, this is very well, interesting. scheme doesn't have to be a bad word. This can okay. be a, a, something like a plan. All right, well, thank you so much. Thank you very much for, for having me here. For clarifying the, the whole situation with cryptocurrencies. Thank you very much. Uh, that was Gabriel Sutterberg. He's a financial stability expert. Thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned with UATV for more.